Hello, everyone. In this video, I will be explaining the United States social scientist war efforts during World War II and after. The purpose of this presentation is to know the motives of two particular groups of scholars. One of these groups is American Defense Harvard Group. This is the group which was organized by Harvard University professors. I will call it in this presentation, Harvard Group. The second one is the Committee for National Morale. <clears throat> this is the group uh, that was based in New York City. I'll call it Morale Committee. In this presentation, we want to know why they made such groups and why they became that active during World War II. To that end, I would like to explore these two groups' common aims. First, we'll look at the background of my study. Second, we'll, uh, we'll make case study one and then case study two. And finally, we'll discuss our findings figuring out these groups' general visions. This is the goal of my study. Okay, let's begin with the background of this study, wartime circumstances of scholars in America. It is a well-known fact that American scholars were involved in various war efforts, such as by citizens' actions, private organizations, and federal agencies. They all used these social scientists' ideas and knowledge directing their ways of their studies. This is one of the most important thing, stories uh, during World War II, of course. However, more importantly, it is also known that social scientists committed their own voluntary actions. One type of such commitment was made by existing organizations such as American Sociological Association. But these organizations are well studied by historians, so I'm not going to look at this type in this presentation. On the other hand, there was another type of commitment which was made by newly formed groups during World War II. Unfortunately, this type is less studied, but I believe these new groups are more important to knowing the scholars' own visions and aims of their activities. So I'll be talking about this second type by focusing on Harvard Group and the Morale Committee. And by comparing these two particular groups, I'd like to see what visions and what aims they had in common. In the following slides, I'll show that both Harvard Group and Morale Committee were trying to create nationwide networks to build up a national society monitoring itself and others, and to bolster their friends' morale while demoralizing their enemies. These elements will have something to do with Cold War social sciences, as I, I will suggest in the discussion section of this presentation. All right, we are done with the background. Now we want to look at case study one. Harvard Group's actions. This group was formed in order to defend America, as the organizer, Dr. Perry said, uh, when they established this, uh, this organization. The group was named American Defense Harvard Group, and it was organized in June 1940, right after France was occupied by Germany. Within this group, many subdivisions were set up, one of which was Committee on National Morale. I'll, I'll be talking about it later. Then, 
What did they do during wartime? First, they began talking with professors and experts. This picture is the program of a national conference of the various groups from uh, the nation who are all involved in defense activities. With the help of such conferences and communication, scholars and officials were getting connected to each other. Second, they began try, uh, trying to analyze social structures of the countries that were involved in the ongoing war. This is a memorandum uh, about German social structure, which was prepared by Committee for National Morale, a Committee on National Morale, whose chair was Talgut Parsons. They together studied the social structure of domestic and foreign countries, especially that of Germany, Italy, Japan, and then America itself. And third, they were also trying to make the public aware of the dangers or possible dangers that were coming from the European war. This is the script for a news broadcast written by Parsons to be regularly given at one of the radio programs at Boston during wartime. This was how they spoke to the public. By doing all these things, through this communication, analysis, and public talks, this group was trying to alert American people. As the chair of the groups said, uh, they were hoping to influence the press, radio, and other publicity agencies, and to create an alertness on the side of their public. It means they wanted American people to be convinced that they should fight enemies. Okay, this is what they wanted. All right, how are the group's activities are now clear? So I'd like to move on to the second case study, which is about morale committee's struggles. As an ad hoc group of social scientists and allied academics, Committee for National Morale was organized in June 1940, and it was later affiliated with the Council for Democracy. <clears throat> Although this committee sounds like Committee on National Morale, it's different. Uh, the Committee on National Morale and the Committee for National Morale are the different committees. Now we are talking about this Committee for National Morale. Okay, and, and, they, what, and what they actually did was first mobilizing researchers into agencies. This is the illustration of this group's plan, a plan for a national moral service. In this plan, they demanded that the federal government should make such an agency and hire as many social scientists as possible so that they can make effective moral policies, policies that, uh, that will make higher morals in American people. They believe the social scientists would effectively collect information and suggest policies. So they, uh, they recommended that they make this division, division, division of scientific research. This is where uh, they believed social scientists should play roles. Second, they were also trying to collect security in related information. This is the list of their proposed research projects whose topics were so wide that uh, it included studying American and the British moral, French and the Netherlands situation, and German, Italian, and Japanese activities. So they were looking at almost all the nations that were involved in the ongoing war. And third, they were trying to lead the government to fight effectively. 
These are the front pages of their leaflet and booklet, which were published in order to move the public and, gov and the government. In these documents, uh, there are so many words uh, that show political notices and and uh, political notices and their recommendations about moral policies. So overall, this committee's works are through planning, stunning, and lobbying intended to push government actions. The group was trying to ensure many of their ideas would get stolen by the government. In other words, they needed their government to steal their ideas and the techniques of social scientists so that so that government can make uh, make use of such ideas and the techniques okay this is what they wanted all right now that we've finished uh, looking at the both case studies let's go on to discuss our findings here, we'll be looking at these two groups' general visions, general aims of their activities. To be sure, the above case studies show that these groups had different emphasis regarding specific actions. Because Harvard group uh, said, uh, there were a need to alert the American public, right? On the contrary, for morale committee, there was a need to push the government, government agencies to act. So the, their specific emphasis were quite different. However, we also find that these two groups had three overarching visions in common. First, they both wanted to create nationwide networks of scholars and officers. Two, they, all, they both wanted to build up a society monitoring itself and others by analyzing and collecting information uh, of America and abroad. Three, they both wanted to bolster their friends' morale while demoralizing their enemies by making the public aware of the enemy risks and by leading the government to the effective actions to attack the enemies. Okay, these are the three general aims that can be identified from the vision of these two groups. And this is the findings of, findings of our study. Based on these findings, finally, I would like to explain the significance of these results. I'd suggest that these wartime visions were anticipating what were to come in the Cold War period. First, Nationally connected scholars and officers indicates the process of nationalization of social science and that would be evident in the Cold War period. Second, a national society monitoring inside and outside means the ways of refined surveillance and propaganda that would be very important in the Cold War, as Anthony Giddens once said in 1985. Third, identifying and making the nation's friends and enemies implies the method by which international relations are imagined and uh, created. So in my opinion, these all these three aspects tells us the legacies of the World War II. And it also tells us its relevance, their relevance to the coming Cold War. Okay, uh, now that's uh, everything I wanted to explain. So let me conclude. The conclusion of this study is one, from the 
result of the case study of the American scholars' war efforts of World War II, we revealed that they had some general visions or general aims in common, such as to build up a self-monitoring national society. Two, these wartime visions of the contemporary world war, we suppose to be transmitted and passed on to the Cold War social sciences. Although this point should be examined in further research by myself or by other researchers. All right, that's all about my study. Thank you very much for listening, everyone. And I hope this presentation made my points very clear. And here's my website the URL. And there are materials that I used in this study. This is materials of the Harvard Group, materials of the Moral Committee, published materials one, published materials two, and finally, acknowledgement. Okay, that's the end of this presentation. Uh, so thank you very much, everyone. Let me finish this video.